you know, I because I'm here, maybe I didn't get it. Oh, okay. Maybe she did. I think she did. Yes, I'm sorry. She did. I'm, I apologize. She was not going to make this meeting. Are we ready, Jennifer? Hi, and welcome to the library board meeting. Today is December 14th, 2023. Okay. Quorum count. Selena? Oh, can you? Sorry. Here. Mary Ellen Walsh? Here. Jennifer Savage, make notice, not here. Ann Benefico? Here. Mike Clark? Here. Valerie Nelson? Here. John Cristiano? Present. Great. We have a quorum. Can I have um, a motion to approve the November 21st, 2023 board meeting? And Annie. Uh -huh. I make a motion to approve the minutes from the November 21st, 2023 meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Thanks, All in John. favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Um, should we set the next board meeting right now? We've tried to be sticking to Tuesdays. I think that's working. Thanks to Selena. That was a good suggestion that we, um, you know, be consistent. What does everyone's schedule look like? Yeah, the January 16th, good for me. It's not good for me. I was just going to say the week of the 15th isn't good for me, but the following week is. The 22nd, beginning with. Does it matter to me, but the following week I'm not here, but that would be fine with me. So, Selena? 15th and 23rd both work for me. Yep. Same with me. Yeah. I, I could do Thursday the 18th. I, I could do. If we don't do a Tuesday, Selena, does that work? Thursday? Fine with me. I could do the 18th. I can do it. Valerie? I'm in the city for the day. I mean, I can do it. I just, uh, it'll, I'll be, but I can. I can't do the 18th. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know what? V Valerie can run the meeting. Is everyone okay with the 16th? Or 23rd? I'm sorry, 23rd? Fine. Mm -hmm. So 23rd. we'll have one, yeah. two, three, six. Okay, we'll have a quorum. Okay, great. Okay, Ken Gilman. Here very quickly, just to talk about uh, the proposed roof, uh, as hopefully you all heard, the Landmarks Commission overwhelmingly approved the fact that we can put a new roof on the building. Uh, they were here, they they walked around as long since the roof is going to be the same uh, as the new roof is going to be the same as the old. They said everything's fine. Then they had their meeting Tuesday, Tuesday. night and it went very quickly. Uh, they should start work no later, I believe, depending upon weather, of course, um, Monday, because I have asked the, the roofer if they could do work on Monday since the library is closed, it would be better you know, to get as much work as they possibly can get done on a Monday. I will hopefully find out tomorrow if definitively that's going to be done. But again, it depends upon weather, and then the weather is not supposed to be great this coming Monday, but once they start, they're going to keep working till they're done. What is it like a? It's a slate a job, or a, what do you think, Ken? I'm they sorry? told us they how, told how us a week. Days? A week? Oh, it's a week. Okay. Yeah. So it, when we had to walk through um, landmarks. They they said it looked. They were so happy that we were using slate instead of a different material. No, not slate. Been, not slate. Not slate. I'm sorry. Cedar. Um, cedar. 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 They were very happy, um, and. Um, Anyway, the roofer was here, and he said a, a week to us. Yes. Perry Roofing we're using, by the way. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Ken. You. Thank you, Jennifer. Have a great holiday, all. Thank you, Ken. Oh, uh, can someone contact our neighbors? Okay, that when it's when they when it starts. Did we tell them it might start this Monday? 
<laughs> so, sorry. They were told for parking issues that there would be people parked in beyond the parking lot in the, we'll say, driveway on the side, number one. And they were told, as well as our tenants, that there's going to be noise, there's going to be people here for a while. Yeah. And to the best of my knowledge, we haven't heard anything from them about it. Okay, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, do we want to get right into um, our finances? The invoices? So were there any questions with anyone going over the invoices? No? Nothing? Uh, okay, I added an invoice or two today. Is this the correct amount, Jennifer? Okay, so it's $51,979.65. Do I happen to have a um, a motion? I move that we approve the warrants at a total of $51,979.65. I second. All in favor? So keep in mind, uh, pass. Keep in mind, this includes the fifty percent of Perry's roofing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mike. Okay. Should we have to move money? So see from the yes, be from the totals, yeah. right? Um, I submitted a report that way we can get around uh, uh, looking at the numbers, and um, I'll be transferring. Um, any thoughts on how much I, uh, you want me to transfer to cover so this? There's twenty one thousand three fifty three in the checking account right now, and we also have to pay for payroll. That's what I'm thinking. Um, do I have a motion to approve $75,000 moving from our savings to our checking? I second. <laughs> that was Mary Ellen and then it was Ann. Okay. I have to check on that report. Uh, Ann uh, picked up, a, I think the CD that I renewed was for three months. Um, and what I was commenting was that um, I guess they are predicting uh, lower interest rates because any uh, further duration CD, the interest rate started uh, going down that they were offering. So I opted for the highest uh, yield, which was a three-month CD. I'll fix that. Great. Thank you very much. Can I ask a silly question? Yeah. What does the D stand for? PR Library. District. District. Is that right? Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, moving right along, committee updates, finance. Um, do you want me to go over this for finance? I don't have any other no. real updates. No. Okay. Only if you think there's something that sticks out that you want to tell the board. No, about. I don't think there's anything in here that's any different. It's the same story with, uh, you know, the investments are kind of settling out versus last year. We obviously have more interest income and things. I like to see passports. It's like up to five grand, which is pretty cool. Um, oh, that's, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's the same theme, I guess, as, as we go through it. I was just, you know, going ahead and looking. Obviously, we have some programming that's that's up in the same areas, right? Children's programming and some of the other the other usual suspects. Um, we'll obviously see in maintenance, I guess, next month, because I think that's where we park it. It's going to be the roof. So we're going to see a big spike in that one uh, next month. But technically, that should be an asset. It's an investment, but it's fine. So I didn't see anything in here that's... Uh, any different than, than really where we've been. But no other updates. Great, thank you. Just a quick question. Any, um, you and Barry getting together in terms of uh, the endowments and what we can uh, uh, use in terms of money? Well, I mean, I wasn't gonna use any of the money just yet until we kind of figure things out. There's only like 10 or 20. I figured we'd use what we have. But I haven't done the uh, we haven't done the uh, investment uh, policy yet. 
you know, I think we're, we're sort of, we have some time because we're sort of stuck in what we're invested in at the moment, but I'm going to work with him to, uh, to get that settled. Oh, great. Cause I think we talked about having whatever the grant doesn't cover that some of the restrictive funds that we could use, maybe cover the roof. Yeah. We, we don't have them fully liquid yet, so we'll probably use what we have and then we'll pull it out later. Okay, great. Thank you, John. Okay, Governor's Legal, Valerie. So you'll see um, in the uh, folder, um, Jennifer and I spent a lot of time going over policies. Um, the first one I'll share is the um, list of policies by date, so the Excel, Jennifer. Um, so what we've done is gone through every policy that exists today, um, and we are making a recommendation of how and how often we should review it and then who owns it. So even though I'm in charge of governance, there are certain policies that are financial in nature, right? There are certain policies that are HR in nature, and so those should be owned by the representative committee. So if you look at this list, the first few loan of materials, overdue books, book selection, patron conduct, and unattended children. Um, we have suggested a five-year um, review status. And, and the reasoning is those just aren't things that change very often. Obviously, anybody can always propose that we change something, um, but that we would put in that we would review those in five years. Two of them, the first two, we have proposals in the Dropbox for today. Um, and then um, the rest are were recently approved. If you go down, sorry, go so, ahead. You have a question first. So that means that after today, when we review the first two, then that those will change to today's date at the last. Correct. Okay, yep. If you, we approve them today, yep. Anyone have any questions about those just on the five year time frame? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. <laughs> I can't. See. I'm too blind. Okay, so the next group um, that's in green up there um, is mixed timings. So we have gifts of tangible property. Um, all of these are legal responsibilities, so that's that's also me. Um, so gifts of tangible property we needs to be reviewed and we're putting it on a five-year cycle. Internet use on a six-year cycle. Library hours, we didn't want to put that as a annual or anything. It just needs to be updated whenever it needs to be updated. Yep. So that I had a question that as needed. So then that could technically be two, three, four years, or just in case we want to open up what, another day or something. Exactly. Okay. Whenever we want to change it. Um, public participation rules, we have five years. F photographic videography policy, we have five years. Bylaws, two years. Um, confidentiality of library records, five. The personnel follow policy, we'll talk about some of my recommendations at executive session that's in flight right now, um, two years. Um, and then whistleblower, active shooter, emergency disaster, and holidays will all be part of the personnel policy. So they will not have a separate written policy is the proposal. Um, Schaffner room, three years. And then the last group in purple um, are all treasurer finance committee. So monetary gifts to the district, investments, capitalization, and annual audit, fund balance, credit card, and expenditure of funds. And we've put those, you know, so again, I put question marks next to some of them. I, I'm more than willing to hear, you know, um, the finance group's view on how often they should be updated. Um, I think five years is long. It doesn't mean, right? I think updating, right, is visiting it, right? It doesn't mean it has to change. So I, I think putting a shorter one on it makes a lot of sense. What would you recommend? Okay. Okay. And um, and then you can see what's up then once we change that. Um, there's a few that are obviously old and that need to be looked at. Can I ask a question? Sure. These are all policies that already exist. Correct. Yep. A lot of policies. Yes. I know how you feel about policies. Yeah, it's a lot of policies. Well, one of the reasons we're going to pull, I mean, library holidays um, and um, some of those were already in personnel, but whistleblower, active shooter, we're pulling that in so that we don't have separate policies for yeah. those. Um, 
I mean, you know, uh, we can put things together. We can create a finance yeah. policy and put them all under one I, instead, right? I it's, was just going to think. Right. The that, question I mean, becomes, right. right, do you want one page, 17 one-page policy or right. one 17-page right. policy? Fair and enough. that's pretty much where you end up. Uh, our, just in terms of uh, how you assign them, I think monetary gifts good, looks good as treasurer. Investments would probably be the finance committee. Capitalization, probably the finance committee. And then annual audit will be treasurer. You got those? Sorry, I was about to type and it wouldn't let me type it in it. So <laughs> I thought it was on mine. I could just make changes. Um, nope, that's great. Thank you. Okay. How much money you keep? Liquid. Liquid. Yep. And that, um, yeah, Westchester Library Services has, yeah. Yeah. This is something that Mike Lewis um, suggested about a year ago on the advice of the uh, auditors. And this is something that, yes, all of the other Westchester library systems have. Mm -hmm. These other policies mostly suggested by Westchester library systems or? We are in line with what the other library okay. systems are doing. Some libraries are a lot more robust and okay. some uh, are less so. And some, like, there's arguments for combining them into right, one big one. It, okay. On the one side, if you have to review a policy and it's only a page or two, right. super. But if it's exactly. a fifty-page yep. policy, it's a real undertaking. Yep. So, yeah. And some of these, am I correct, Jennifer? Some of these were recommended by our insurance carrier, correct? So just yeah. just so you know, on some of them that were recommend, just so you know, on the insurance one, they're recommended. They are not required for us to, um, which is why we decided that some of them could just be a paragraph in the personnel policy instead of a twenty-page document about active shooters or emergency disaster or whatever. Exactly. Any other questions? I just have a quick question. The money we collect from the overdue and lost library materials, I, saw, I, saw, I read the policy. Where where does that go? Do we have like a little kitty or what? what what's like a little fund? <laughs> I know, but we can't. It, it is um, on the balance sheet in the P&L that we, we do so collect. So it goes it's, into it's, a it's, bank it's account? No, we, what? yeah, I mean, we have a sort of a cash box. Petty cash. So all like, of our uh, cash okay. collections, yeah. And then it, we do a report at the end of every night called the cash report. And then okay. Heidi takes that and updates it. So okay. All right. Thank you. Not to yeah. be <laughs> too um, splitting hairs here, but I think that if you return something that's overdue, mm -hmm. don't you not have to pay for the, oh, the fee or something ha happens? Like okay. Something yeah, so the, the way it works is if you haven't returned something for 30 days, it goes into lost status. If you then find the item, you can bring it back and we won't charge you for the re replacement of the item, but you do pay the fine. But we have a maximum fine of $3 per item um, for everything except DVDs, which is a maximum of $10. Right. So we have two proposed updates to policies. Um, one, the loan of materials, and then the other is overdue. Does anyone have any other questions? Did folks get a chance to read them? Can I get motions if we're ready? We'll start with the loan of materials policy. Anyone want to make a motion to approve it? I make a motion to approve the loan of material policy. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the second one is the overdue and lost material policy. Um, I make a motion to approve the overdue and lost library materials um, as recently revised. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, everyone. Anything else, Val? That's it for governance and legal, I think. Okay, Jenna uh, Weiss, unfortunately, is not here, but if we have any questions, she's asked me to say, to please reach out to her by our by email system. Um, Selena, program? I just wanna say that the um, photography exhibit, I know that's not really programming, but like, people are over the moon about it. So that's super exciting. Um, and I'm really glad to see that the artist was so, had such a great reception. Um, and also the bubbles in Broadway. We have sold out 80 people signed up and a wait list. And so that's 
awesome that we're going to be putting this space to use by a professional. That's all I got to say. So for any of you who didn't know, Steve Vandevelt was here for a little bit. Um, there's some interest in um, some of his photography. This is his first show, first exhibit. Um, and he's getting into circus, which he's promised me that he will come back and do his, do a, um, a show, an exhibit of circus. He just came back from Las Vegas. Um, and so it's exciting that we had this here. And then Jennifer, we talked about the bubbles and we were gonna, you would work on the RSVP. So this way you're gonna see if people are definitely coming and then see if we can get people on the wait list. Cause so many people are getting sick now. I mean, it's pitiful. Uh, yes, I sent the registration um, list to the foundation today. It was, um, 80 people, as Selena said, we have uh, six more on the wait list. We asked in the reminder postcard that if you are find yourself not able to come, please let us know so we can work our way through the wait list. I think it'll be full, but people are dropping like flies. They are. That's why I'm just asking. So if you, you know, um, so hopefully everyone who wanted to come can come because I do think that we're going to have at least six people not coming, unfortunately. That is going to be such an experience with our new acoustics. I just, I just can't wait. Um, anything else, Lena? Okay, Anne, human resources. It's that time of year again for performance reviews. So the HR committee got together this week and uh, um, reviewed what was presented to us and also prepared some first drafts. And we'll be reporting on that um, more next month and we might discuss it a little tonight in the executive committee meeting thank you um valerie but you, we kind of covered it yep. okay we'll john yeah i think legal should always um john no update um jennifer savage i is unfortunately not here but there's other ladies on that committee can someone report because i know you had a meeting and Think there's anything to report since since the last meeting when we um when we got together so there's really nothing nothing new we were, i think we're, we're more waiting for for clc um we did get some emails with some ideas and we saw some things that clc did on linkedin you know that other libraries they did but there's nothing there's nothing definitive right now okay so we're still uh that's that's where we are i don't think we have any numbers or anything yet no I mean, I mean, unless Jennifer got something, but I haven't seen anything. Okay, great. Um, before parking lot, I turn it over to Valerie. Um, we did get a check today, um, fifty two hundred odd dollars. Um, if Jennifer, when Jennifer comes back, um, this is the we had given Cantazone twenty thousand dollars. I knew I didn't use all, all of it, so him and I sat down, um, in a meeting and we went through line by line item. And um, we determined that he owed us a little over $5,200. So the check actually came today in the mail. <laughs> so that was that's exciting. We got 5200 The only other thing that I'll have to share on uh, parking lot is that um, the town engineer has agreed to review our traffic study for free and, um, and then sit down with me to go over it. Um, and then also he will recommend um, other engineers that he's worked with before. Um, and, uh, and then when I have that conversation with him, I'm going to ask obviously for a, you know, for an estimate if, if he'll give it to me. Um, so that's kind of where we are. And obviously that's not going to happen until after the holidays. Jennifer, I just told the board that we received a check from Candazone. Okay. Um, great. And parking improvement, um, going forward is Valerie, Jennifer, you're welcome. Um, Thank you. Uh, director's report. Hey, I just wanted to inform you that I was able to write and present the grant from the American Library Association, Libraries Transforming Communities, a grant for small and rural libraries. It's for $10,000. We'll find out in February whether we got it. Um, I'm hoping to 
apply a great deal of the funds towards um, programming, technology, um, and materials for the neurodivergent community. I wanted to ask you all to, there, this is the second round of grants and there's gonna be a third. We can apply for 20 or 10. And I was curious what you guys think about possibly putting in accessibility hardware for the lower level, the finished lower level over there. Uh, it's kind of like the one that we have from our level down to the um, nonfiction and the, and the team room. If you can just maybe think on that, it's, it's a few months before. It would probably, I, I talked to Jim Perry. He said that it is doable. We would probably have to have an apparatus similar to the one that we have that it, it comes down and would fit a whole wheelchair on it. I don't know if our um, stairway is wide enough, but I just thought that that would be a good use of the funds if we were able to get it. So give Seth some thought and I'll bring it up again closer to the, the time that's open. So here's a pitch I would like to give you. I wanna offer book donation uh, to the community. Uh, it comes in the form of a bin that is placed out in the parking lot. Uh, there's a picture of it here. The bin is not on wheels. Um, it's best to put it on concrete, but they can put it on grass, which would work uh, best for us. I went out and um, took some photographs of the parking lot and uh, areas that it would fit sort of in between parking spaces where it wouldn't be um, you know, obtrusive. Um, they collect the books every two weeks. So we get a calls probably once or twice a week asking, do you uh, take book donations? And the answer is no. And that's been the case for many years. And I usually um, give them information so that they can donate them to the Vietnam Veterans of America or the Boys and Girls Club. And I just think this would be a great service to be able to offer the community and we'd be able to do it at no cost to us at all. And who is the organization that the organization is Discover Books okay. and the um, books go, as you can see here, but maybe you can't really see is uh, it's collected from all different um, avenues in the community and then it goes to them and then they either um, sell them or redistribute them to um, it, communities that are in need, whether it's a school, um, a prison, a um, community center, whatever it might be. Uh, so I think it's it's a it's a oh kind God. of a win win for everybody. Yeah, the only thing that, that I don't love is the selling of them. I love all the rest of it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Well, but you know, the place that we usually donate our books to when we clear our shelves, um, they also sell, sell it. It's a way first. for them to keep it going. Yeah, you know, they're selling it at a deeply discounted rate. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I I guess my thought. Well, I can let other people talk. I'd like to. I personally might want to learn a little bit more about the organization. Sure. What is it called again? And you just discover, discover books. Discover books. Mm -hmm. and they provide the bin. They put the they provide the bin. They come clear every two weeks or sooner if we need it. Uh, they don't need, uh, say, a forklift uh, access to be able to get in like a, like a garbage truck would with a dumpster. So we can put it into a place that's, you know, not it doesn't have to have, you know, 30 feet of, of uh, clear space on either side. Where were you thinking? Um, there's a couple of places in the upper lot and one, they could be right alongside our drive-in donation box or d return box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but we have several spots in the upper, upper back lot where we, we, the parking lot space are like, there's a wedge kind of that, that you can't put a car into. And I thought, you know, why not use that spot? Actually, Valerie, that's true. If it, it, you put it next to our return book bin. And uh, people will come and give but there were turn books in right. there. Clearly, there's no mistaking the two. But I, yeah, I, I agree. It could definitely happen. That would be our, our last resort kind of a location. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty colorful bin. But, yeah, I, but, but, but they, but they I look nothing alike. People, but yeah, still, yeah. It, it could happen. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I can look more into the um, to the company and, and report back or you guys. Can yeah, I, I guess I would own. just whenever I do anything from a um, nonprofit mm -hmm. just to try to understand sure. what's their, you know, how much money do they take versus how much do they give back to the community, et cetera, before we, before we kind of, you know, Absolutely. end up in a relationship with someone that, you know, has bad press or, or whatever. I always check charity navigator yeah, myself exactly. before I donate to yeah. anything. So, that's, so I, I appreciate yeah. that. But I love the concept. Great. Okay. I'll, I'll see if there's some other alternatives too, just so you can maybe choose if it's possible. And then just very briefly, I wanted to make an announcement that after fulfilling one year or tenure as a secretary for the Public Library Directors Association, I'll be stepping into the role of vice president. Thank you. <laughs> and that's it from me. Thank you. I have one question, but maybe Val answered it for me. Um, 
is there any way we can get you or more microphones? Because you have to go back and forth. Yeah, I know it's not ideal. I actually went to um, a library in Greenberg and it's the exact same situation. For every two microphones that we add, it's another layer of, of hardware in the closet over there at a cost of about 10,000. <laughs> no, wow. so our current setup was about 30,000 and we ended up with four microphones. So, you know, you do the math. So I, I don't think there's a return on investment. Okay. But I was glad to hear that a library as big as Greenberg wasn't able to find a way around. I guess the only other uh, thing that we might think about is a different configuration of our table so that they're all kind of closer. I think at one point there was a kind of family table kind of situation where the tables were in the middle and everybody was kind of looking at each other. Yeah. yeah. So, but I mean, we, we should maybe experiment with some different uh, table configurations. I'm, I'm going to, not that I think we need to do this right away, Jennifer, because I, I don't want to go down this path um, now, but the only other thing I can think of now that the acoustics are better, do hanging microphones solve the problem? Yeah. Uh, now that the acoustics are in, maybe we don't need microphones. Maybe we can pick it up on, you know, we can well, do a practice and see. And then we don't need them. Well, we don't, we don't need it on ourselves. I did a practice but, with these. Yeah. I did a practice with these. Any? Yeah. Great. One of the things that we do now at work, because everyone's so into Zoom, not that I'm suggesting we all have to do that, but if you always bring your iPad, I always bring my laptop. If we dialed into the Zoom, we just got to, we'd have to practice so that we didn't get a noise interference. But if we were talking into our computers when we talked, they should hear it. So. Mike suggested that. Yeah. And we, we thought that there was going to be a problem with reverb and feedback and all that, but let's do some practice ones. Absolutely. But this really might solve the problem because you remember before it sounded like we were underwater. So it was really, it was echo and reverb, but since that's been eliminated, we might not make microphones anymore. Oh, good idea. Good idea. Okay, I just thought I'd bring that up, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, anything else, Jennifer? Okay, new business. Um, I actually have some new business. Ari Fleischer, whose mother unfortunately passed away not too long ago. Um, I did know this actually. I did not know what relation, but it happens to be his grandmother right behind the um, our, our big generators is a huge tray and I have a picture, I can easily send it to you by email, that has a plaque on it. It's like a rock with a plaque on it. And you were with me, right? When you saw it. Um, so his grandmother is buried there. Um, the tree is, not buried, I'm sorry, not buried, not buried. It's in memoir, I'm sorry, no, please. It's in, so that tree was planted um, many years ago. It's obviously grown to a very big tree. Um, and he has, some kind of paperwork he said here at the library. I don't know, we'd have to go through all those, you know, the boxes that we had electronically, but he donated that tree with his family and he'd like to put a plaque honoring his mother on it because it's a family tree and he'd like to keep it going. So I said, I bring it up to the board. Now, Ari Fleischer was um, born here. His family lived here, his uh, parents. So his mother, just to let you know her legacy here, I, he told me uh, 14 years, I actually knew his mother. She was a volunteer here for 14 years and she was very friendly with um, Marilyn and she was um, friendly with Mrs. April who used to work here. So she was here for quite a long time as a volunteer. Um, thoughts? You said there's already a plaque there for the- yeah, grandma. He wants to yes. add another plaque. I, I'm not sure. Thoughts? Yeah. It's that sounds good. He also wanted to make sure that if we ever do any parking lot expansion, we don't touch that tree. Yes. Yes. Um, there's quite a few people who have expressed um, right now our plans that were in the works did not harm any. And I, I told him as well in the center aisle, there are some of those trees um, are dedicated and we're dedicated and Ari Fleischer wanted to make sure that his tree was saved by any renovations, um, along with some of the trees along here and in the front. And um, you could see that there's old plaques and bronze things. And so they were dedicated and given to us. 
So I totally understand. Um, I am sure it will be small and discreet, but should the board or somebody look at it just to approve the plaque before it's up there? I have a picture that I'll send you. It, he wants to put put it the same plaque that his um grandmother, it, you know, the same plaque. So they'd be matching. And then he also said that um, if he can, he'd like to, it, it's kind of, he must have been here. It's kind of faded the plaque. He'd like to come here where he gets the plaque from and have it shined. I didn't think that would be a problem. Okay, so it's okay if I contact him in his office? Okay, great, thank you. Any other new business? No? Yes. Jennifer, did you wanna talk about the president's report that was in the draft box? Thank you. Um, every year we do a report to the community and it's a, a standard practice that the um, president also does a report on the state of the library to the community. Um, I whipped one up and put it into the uh, trustee Google Drive so that PR committee could take a look at it um, and put their stamp on it. And then um, it's typically read out loud during the um, either December or the January board meeting and then posted to the library website. So if the PR committee could take a look at that and um, let me know what their changes are and then I'll prepare it for Bonnie's um, reading at the next board meeting. Yeah, wasn't Jennifer Weiss was gonna look at that, right? Um, I'm assuming mm -hmm. so, I did send it to the committee, so. I yeah. remember seeing, no, I, yeah. I just can't remember having seen this before, like for, for the previous year oh. or whatever, however many years I've been doing this for. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I came across it, um, I guess the last person that did it was maybe back in 2018, Miriam Shindell. Okay. And when, right. I was going through, when I was going through all the archives looking for the parking lot stuff, I came across and so oh, we should be doing this, so. Uh, yeah, we'll put out two reports every year, then one from the president and one um, for the community. Great. When does the uh, community one go out, Jennifer? Yeah, that I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, sorry, J Jennifer, would you draft up that content for for January next year? Okay. Of course. So um, help me out. There's two reports that are going out. So, so I read the one that Bonnie you signed in the in the Dropbox. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. So, so one is a, a letter from Bonnie a letter, as, as yeah. the president okay. of the and yeah. then the other one is from sort of the whole library. Uh, it's more of a community view. Bonnie's going to go over each and every basically aspect of what we've accomplished over the last year. Mm -hmm. And then the letter of the community is more of a friendly update, lots of pictures, uh, thanking volunteers and saying staff accomplishments and you know, like that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, they're typically separate. I, I checked all the other library websites and they typically do too. Mm -hmm. No, but you have to talk in the market. Yeah, I know. But does anybody know when our fiscal year ends? <laughs> no. So uh, our, our, yeah, so we our calendar, calendar year. Okay. But keep in mind that we've approved the budget and it starts January 1st. But also keep in mind that our um, tax dollars hit us first to second week of May because your April 30th tax bill is for the library. So we get a $100,000 advance from the town out of seven hundred seventy-four thousand dollars, we get a hundred thousand advance in the fall, and then the six hundred and sixty-four thousand dollars hits us first or second week in May. Okay, got it. I was just thinking about whether you kind of split them so that there's, but yeah. Okay. The PR uh, committee will come back, I think, on this, right? Yes, yes. Or we hope so. <laughs> I, I just have a quick question, Jennifer. Have you heard anything about the the name plaques for the benefactresses? Okay, thank you. Anything else for new business? Public remarks? <laughs> Everyone stands at the fountain. <laughs> Do you know of, of people or who have um you know maybe sick and not coming? Okay. That's okay. 
so um who so we have these beautiful tablecloths and everything you can use tomorrow if who's ever in charge <laughs> thanks or not tomorrow saturday yeah I remember I'm coming. Um, we have to park at the town park and the shuttle bus. So get there a little early because it takes, you know, five, 10 minutes for the shuttle bus from the town to here. And then he has to do a loop again and keep doing loops. Yeah, it, it's going to be on the shorter side, too. It's probably only going to be about 45 minutes long, but they are planning to arrive here at two o'clock to start the decorating. Um, Faye, I think, is going to be doing it. Also known as Rebecca Walsh. Uh, so I'm sure it's going to be gorgeous. <laughs> I can't wait. But yeah, well, I'll offer her the use of these if they like. Yeah. Any other new business um, or public remarks? No? Um, I think that we could um, adjourn. Do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn the meeting. Do I have a second? Me. Hey, second. All in favor? And remember, uh, we'll take a three-minute recess, and we're back here for executive session. All right.